Here we are, another week, and my cold is gone, and this week we are going to talk about normal maps. In the same way that in previous videos we used a texture map to get a different color at every point in this triangle using a little bit of linear interpolation and shader magic, we're going to do the same thing this time, but with a texture map instead. This is a texture map, I'm sorry, with a normal map instead. This is a normal map on the left, and what's going to happen is this normal map will be applied to this triangle, and each texel in this normal map will represent a normal that we can use to get really detailed lighting because the lighting, as we discussed in the previous video, depends on the normals. So there are two steps here. First, we're going to, step one is we're going to discuss how to create a normal map given a bunch of normal data. I'm not going to discuss in this video how to generate the normal data. Maybe that's a future video. But for now, let's assume that we have a big block of normal data normals. And these have x, y, z coordinates and they are in the intervals negative 1 to 1. Should be a square bracket for a closed interval. It's negative 1 to 1 because since it's a unit length vector you are never going to get any values less than negative 1 or greater than 1. And then we have to convert this because we have to store them in a texture, and textures are, here's a texture. Textures take red, green, and blue as their, as their data format. And red, you cannot have a negative red, green, blue value, so you have to convert from this interval to that interval. But it's really simple to do. We use, for example, a remap, remap function like we discussed or you could just do a little bit of multiplication and division, it's a little simpler. We have, we have options. So then we have our data sitting in a texture stored on the hard drive. It's loaded into the game, it's passed into the GPU, and then when we are in a shader, we have to then take it back, when we get it back, we get it in this zero to one uh, interval, and we have to convert it back into its original interval, negative one to one. So we just reverse the process that we did, we do another remap, we take it from zero one to negative one one. So that's step one. Step two is that this normal map, all of its all of the data is in a is is in a weird coordinate system. It's in the coordinate system of the surface of the triangle. But if your model is comprised of a thousand triangles that means a thousand different coordinate systems. So for each triangle, we are going to create a matrix that will convert. I keep saying matrices. Matrix. I mean, we use matrix matrices so much in game development. You can never learn enough about matrices here. We're going to take a matrix to convert these this normal data from being in the surface of the triangle coordinate system to the local coordinate system of the of the object, whatever object it is that we're rendering. Okay? So to do that, let's remember that in our game we have we have some dimensions here. We have X and Z is actually the up dimension and then Y goes like this. That goes into your monitor. But with normal map, it's different. We still have x like this, but now y, see, y goes upward like this, and x goes to the right, and z is now coming up out of your monitor. So you'll notice that x and, I'm sorry, y and z are switched. y and z are switched. So we need to make a matrix that will switch the y and z uh, dimensions for us which is a really easy matrix to make. Uh, if this matrix doesn't make immediate sense to you, I recommend going and reviewing some of the matrix videos. All we did was we switched the Y and Z columns. Here's the X, Y, and Z columns. Normally, for an identity matrix, it would be 1, 1, and 1. Since we switched Y and Z, now the 1 is here and the 1 is there. And that will, if this is our normal vector right here, this is our unit length normal vector. We throw it through this matrix and then bam, 
it's going to be in the correct uh, coordinate space for us. So I'm going to call this T the, the transform matrix to get us into the local object space. And then, like we discussed in the previous video, we need G, the matrix, to get us into the global object space. We multiply those by N, our, our um, normal. And then we do that dot product with the vector that goes to the light. And from here, we're going on to stuff we've done in previous videos. So let's hop on over to the, oh, one more thing to mention, some terminology. When we're dealing with normals and normal maps, these x and y vectors actually have names. This one is the tangent tangent vector, and this one is the bitangent vector. Or sometimes you'll hear them referred to as the normal or binormal and tangent, but I like tangent and bitangent better. So let's go to the code section and plug all this stuff up. And one quick thing I forgot to mention is why the normal maps are blue. It's because when we take that vector data and store it as a color, the default 001 gets remapped to a color that is blue. If you think about 001, if we remap that to red, green, blue, then the 1 is blue. And so the highest value is blue, and so it takes a, takes a very bluish color. So I, I think that's cool and interesting. So let's do this shader. You'll see that actually first before we do this. Here is the ground and you'll see I've provided tangent and bitangent. You, you absolutely need this if you're going to do normal maps. You don't need it without normal maps, but you absolutely need the tangent and bitangent fields. Uh, so whatever, most engines will do this already for you. If you're building your own engine, you might have to uh, write some code to send tangents and bitangents into the shader. But now we have that. So let's take a look. We grab, this is the code path for if we have a normal map. This is the previous video's code path, and this is this video's code path. So we grab the texture out of our normal map, do a little bit of math to remap it properly, normalize it because it can get un denormalized when you're doing weird things with it. And this is weird, we have to flip the Y channel. The reason for that is kind of weird and unrelated to what we're doing um, but just be careful about that with OpenGL. Sometimes you have to flip the channel. Okay, so let's make a matrix. We're going to call it TBN. That is the tangent, bitangent, normal matrix. Uh, and we are going to pass our vectors into it. I forget what my vectors are called, so I'm going to scroll up. Here we go. Fragment tangent, fragment bitangent, and fragment normal. There we go. So tangent is x, y tangent is y, and the normal is z. So now we have to create the normal in the global space. And that's going to be very similar to what we did last time. We have our global 3 by 3 matrix. But now we have to multiply through by our TBN matrix before we're done. Oh, and here, instead of instead of using fragment normal, we we here we use fragment normal, and we pass that into the matrix. But now, fragment normal, we build another matrix, and we pass the normal that we got from the texture instead, because this is the one that has all the detail in, and we want all that detail. So, uh, I think that should be it. Let's run it and see what see what we get here. An error. Why is there an error? Oh, here it is. It's because shaders work a little bit differently than C++ is, and I'm used to the C++ way of doing Okay, so here we go. There we are. So this entire floor is actually just two triangles. It is one square, but all this detail comes from that normal map. And if I go up next to this box, if you look very closely, the uh, the light onto the normal map should match up with the light that's falling on the box for our physically realistic simulation of light. 
So good, we're gonna continue in this vein with more lighting and shaders and maps of different kinds in the next few videos. See you then.